Long live Palestine, long live. Down with Israel, apartheid, down. Down with apartheid, Israel, down. Forward to solidarity with Cuba, forward. Thank you very much, uh, Comrade Mohamed, uh, Comrade Quara, and all the good team from the BDS, from the, well, I can choose my SACP head. Um, we want to thank you very much first for organizing this very important event as a consequence of many activities that we have had over the last week and previously as we were preparing the main Israel Apartheid Week activities that went throughout South Africa to conscientize South Africans about the apartheid role of Israel, its brutality on the Palestinian people to call for our people to boycott Israel and to boycott Israel goods, to disinvest from Israel and making sure that we can punish that apartheid government that is segregating the people of Palestine on whose land they now occupy. I must also express our greetings to the leadership of the Communist Party, Comrade Reniva Fori from our central committee, uh, who's uh, with the delegation from uh, Sao Tome and Principe, who have joined us here, Comrade Oriello Martins, the president of the MLSTP. We want to thank you as well for joining this event uh, this evening. We know you are tired. You've just arrived uh, from a long travel, but we are happy that you are able to join our activity today. I also want to greet and thank the comrades from the Cuban Embassy, Comrade Ivan, as well as uh, our comrade from uh, the Palestinian Embassy, who obviously gave a very moving input. And I felt there was no need for me to come here and say anything. Uh, you could feel the passion of someone who has been removed from his own land forcefully by an occupier that has fooled the world to cling to some kind of solidarity, working together with the imperialist US government. Down with US imperialism, down. Down, down with imperialism, down. down. Comrades, I've been asked basically to say a few words on um, the 30th anniversary celebrations of Kutokwana Valley. Kutokwana Valley is basically a village in uh, Quito, it's quite basically a village in Angola, small village, small town. But it is in that village that the so-called mighty apartheid South Africa was taught a lesson that they will never forget in their lifetime, a military lesson. This was a government with nuclear capacity, with best fighter planes, best military equipment, they have conscripted South African youth, particularly white youth, forcefully to join the army to go and fight against the liberation forces on the continent. They have occupied Namibia. They were fighting against Umkonto Sizwe in exile and other parts of the, can uh, of the continent. They were raiding the region of SADC in Zimbabwe, in Lesotho, in Botswana, in Mozambique consistently, and they killed hundreds of comrades and hundreds of innocent uh, children and women and people, civilians uh, on top of that. But in Angola, after the victory of the MPLA over the Portuguese colonizers, the apartheid government mobilized together with the American government a reactionary force called Rina, uh, uh, Rinamo, I'm sorry, UNITA. UNITA sought to reverse the victory of the liberation of the people of Angola. In that regard, it reached a situation where the American government provided armed support to South Africa to go and assist the, the UNITA in order to defeat the MPLA and to defeat a democratic Angola. On that basis, 
the Angolans sought assistance from the Cubans. And Fidel Castro decided to accept the request to help the Angolans to defend their freedom, to defend their liberation. Angola had itself become a platform on which Umkonto Sizwe, our own military wing, received much support, and we established our bases there. As we speak, we have more than 400. In fact, we left about 443, 243 graves of MK combatants in the land of Angola. Those are combatants who are fighting for the freedom that we enjoy today. And some of them also participated in the fight against UNITA and against the South African government, for, uh, SADAF at that time, that was uh, fighting in Angola. But when the Cubans came, the whole battlefield changed. Fidel Castro took charge of the actual command of the forces, the Cuban forces that came to fight specifically in Angola. He sent more than 35,000 personnel to go and fight in Angola. This is the single biggest solidarity Africa has ever received from anywhere else in the world, where 35,000 people decided to give their lives to a nation that they did not know. The only thing that links up with that nation was slavery, the origin of imperialism. And Fidel Castro and the Cuban Revolution aptly named the operation to come to Angola to defend the Angolan Revolution. They called it Operation Carlota. Carlota was a Cuban descendant a Cuban woman who was a descendant of the slaves, African slaves who were in Cuba, who fought against Spanish slavery in Cuba. Today she has a big monument in honor of her great efforts who mobilized the peasants and the people in Cuba to fight against slavery. But in honor of the African slaves, as Comrade Ivan was indicating, the Cuban Revolution named that operation in Angola Operation Carlota. That was one of the most successful military operations. They did not even tell their friends, the Soviet Union, who were the main backers of the Cuban Revolution at the time, that they were making this particular intervention in Cuba. They built overnight military airports, set up systems, brought in, as I indicated, over 35,000 personnel, majority of whom were military personnel, and technicians and everybody else, medical teams and so forth, to come and fight. And the greatest battle in that fight, which was concluded in 1988, was the Battle of Quito Kwana Valley, wherein the apartheid government, the SADAF, the apartheid army, was defeated militarily. They never accept this, they never talk about this, but they were defeated militarily. And that paved the way for the liberation of Namibia as well as South Africa. The UN was then forced to, to accept Resolution 435 after negotiations, and through revolution, Resolution 435, we paved now the democratic dispensation in Namibia. And of course, MK was then asked to leave uh, because there was an agreement the Cubans would have to withdraw from Angola. As one uh, commentator indicated, and this was accepted by the Cubans, that as they leave Angola, they will not take any oil from Angola. They will not take any single current of Angolan diamonds or any mineral of Angolan people. They will only take with them only the mortal remains of their combatants who died, if you like, in a foreign land fighting for another people. There's no greater solidarity than this one. And in fact, the Cuban combatants who came to fight, majority of, of whom volunteered to come and fight, Cuba even risked risk its own internal security because most of its military personnel were fighting outside. Hence, Fidel Castro directly took charge of the operations. He worked 22 hours 
a day throughout the entire operation. Two hours sleep per night every single day in order that it can pay special attention to the success of that particular revolution and to defend, if you like, if I may use this term, the revolution of another country. But as an internationalist, he has understood that revolutions for freedom, for humanity, for equal rights, for human rights, are international revolutions. The system that imposes inequality in society, the system of capitalism, has been universalized. It's a system that is, is, is led by the imperialist forces, largely the US, uh, the British, uh, France, and others. But overall, Kuto Kwanavala was a great lesson, a great platform of solidarity. It has not yet been equaled. The Cubans were not doing it for the first time for us here on the continent. They were the first to defend the Algerian Revolution. When the Algerian Revolution was in crisis, they equally again, in 1961, sent a big delegation through Venezuela to go and defend that particular revolution. But with this one in Quito, they exceeded any other intervention at a solidarity level. But to reach the sense of solidarity, you must have a sense of empathy as a human being. You must have a feeling for the other people. That is why Commander Che Guevara himself had indicated in summing up the concept of uh, solidarity, that you should be able to feel deep within the injustice that happens to anybody anywhere else in the world. And in that way, you can have a sense of empathy. You can express solidarity. You can feel the pain of others. There's no country that has shown that than the Cubans. But let me briefly also say, Comrade Mohamed, without uh, being long, I know I've already been long, this is a big question. The Palestinians, those of us who were in MK cam camps as military combatants of our movement, we used to wear with pride a military gear, we normally call it combat, which came directly from Palestine. Its name was just called Palestine. That was our combat. It was not everyone who had it. But when you have it, you felt so proud you felt so dignified that you are wearing a combat of heroes and heroines of struggle for liberation, for freedom. A, a, a combat that resembled the unity between our struggle and the struggle of the people of Palestine. And we cannot forget as South Africans the solidarity, the immense solidarity that we received from the people of Palestine in many ways, through food, through uh, our own combat that they gave us. Soldiers, when we were in the bush, we never earned a salary. We didn't have an income. We lived purely on solidarity, on even second-hand clothing from all over the world, on food that was donated by people from all over the world, but not least the Palestinians and the Cubans. That is why even our green combat was reflecting the green combat of the Cubans, the original MK combat reflected that of the Cubans. The Cuban doctors were with us in the bush. They were beaten by mosquitoes like us. They, had, they were no special individuals. They lived with us. They ate what we ate. They were never given any special treatment. So I've never known solidarity than I have experienced of a solidarity from the Palestinians and the Cuban people. And I must indicate that I really feel touched by our young people, particularly those who are in the operational division of the BDS. How they have taken up the mantle of solidarity and lifted it higher to conscientize South Africans, particularly our young people, that it is where our lives are inadequate without giving solidarity to the sovereign people all over the world. Particularly those that have given us solidarity and support, not least the Palestinian people. We want to wish you well in this event and we hope to see you in many other campaigns so that until the Israeli government has withdrawn completely its own presence in our country and our government has fully downgraded and ultimately cut ties with the Israeli government, we must continue to struggle so that ultimately the Palestinian people will be free.
or maybe free, but we know that they will be free through our solidarity. If we don't give them solidarity, the Israel government will not live willingly from the occupied territory of the land that they now call their own, which is not their own. Therefore, they can only succeed through struggles, through solidarity, as the Battle of Kitokwane Valley had shown, the liberation of Angola, uh, the defense of the liberation of Angola, the liberation of Namibia, the actual liberation of South Africa, we owe it to the Kitokwane Valley Battle. As Fidel Castro indicated, that the history of Southern Africa and Africa will be written anew and should be written anew before and after Kwitokwana Valley. Indeed, he was right. After that battle, after that victory, the history of our country changed for the better. President Nelson Mandela didn't just walk out of prison for nothing. Many other international activities contributed. But most important and final one was that battle in Kwitokwana Valley when the apartheid army knew that it can be defeated. I went to Palestine to offer my life to the Palestinian people some years ago. I thought I was not going to talk about this, but it's important because uh, when my dear comrade gave me this, it reminded me when uh, I was with comrade Jack Gavenda, one of our young internationalists who died in Swaziland, in solidarity with the people of Swaziland. We went together to Palestine to go and offer our solidarity to fight in Palestine. And the PLO government and leadership decided that we can, they cannot accept us because Israel government will think that the revolution is using mercenaries. We had good discussions with them. We, are, we accepted that. And then President Yasser Arafat put, took his scarf that he was wearing like this and put it on the neck of Comrade Jack, Jack Gavenda, the young great internationalist of our liberation struggle who was also in MK, who also went to give hands to the people of Colombia, the FARC movement, as part of continuing the international solidarity program. But unfortunately, after he came back, he passed on in solidarity activities in Swaziland. So I just want to say, let's not give up to give solidarity. Solidarity, perhaps, and in many instances, is the only life-saving mechanism available to the people under the brutality of oppressive regimes, and in this case, particularly those in Palestine by the Israeli government. I want to thank you once more for organizing this event, and let's have some fun. Let's enjoy ourselves. You have had great work, uh, Comrade Kwara, I can see. It has been a hectic week. But we have done it. I think we must do it again. And let's increase this uh, particular program in solidarity with the people of Palestine. Long live Palestine. Long live. Long live. Amanda.